Third grade ELA, text set six, um, genre study, expository nonfiction. The goal is to notice the book's compare and contrast organization. So, um, all right, um, I see a parrot and an octopus on this page. That's an inter interesting pair. Why do you imagine they might be shown together like this? The heading says a beak is for crushing. I know a parrot has a beak, but what about an octopus? Today I'm going to read you the book Shell Beak Tusk by Bridget Hughes. Let's read to find out about some surprising animal pairs. Terrific traits. Every living thing on earth has traits that allow it to eat or avoid being eaten. For instance, a sticky tongue allows an anteater to pick up ants, and a shell protects a turtle from a coyote. A sticky shell, on the other hand, would be inconvenient in both respects. Predators would stick to it, and the poor turtle would be forced to lug around dangerous animals while foraging for food. Thus, only helpful traits develop over time in a process called evolution. Animals that are related often have similar traits which they inherit, inherited from a common ancestor. Rabbits and hares both have long ears. Whales and dolphins both have fins. This is not surprising. You may have inherited traits from your relatives, too. Your grandmother's freckles or your uncle's ears. However, some animals share traits but are not related. Why? Because they have adapt, adapted the same traits separately in order to survive in their environments. This is called convergent evolution. Think about it. If a sticky tongue helps one animal adapt to eating ants, wouldn't that same trait help an ant eater animal? Ant eating animal across the globe, both animals separately would be better equipped to survive and then pass the trait on to their babies. And so the animal traits, so the traits such as shell, beak, and tusk evolve over and over again in different animals. So this is about convergent evolution. Let's think about that for a moment. Evolution is the process by which animals change over time in many generations in order to survive. Sometimes two very different animals have the same traits. They evolved in the same way. This is called convergent evolution because it's ha happened the same way. Spines are for prick pricking. A porcupine spine grows to a foot long. When the porcupine is scared, the spines stand straight up. If a coyote, lion, or owl makes the mistake of trying to eat the porcupine, they get pricked. Not only that, but some spines break off and stay stuck in the, in the attacker. The iguana is covered in spikes, too. It feels, it, it feels threatened. It curls up into a spiny ball. This tells the predator, mainly dangos and dogs, not to mess with it. Though they share a spiky defense system, the porcupine and echidna live on opposite sides of the world and are not related. The porcupine, which lives everywhere but Australia and Antarctica, is part of the rodent family native to Australia. An echidna is a rare kind of mammal that lays eggs and is called a monotrim. A shell is for hiding. Turtle shell is made of bone. Most of the turtle's bones are inside its body, but its backbone and rib cage grow as the shell. If a box turtle sees a fox or raccoon, it hides its head, tail, and legs inside the bony shell, unable to break through. The predator eventually gives up, and the turtle wins the game of hide and seek. The only bony part of a snail is its shell. The, the rest of its body, the soft part, is called the foot. If a snail is threatened, it pulls its foot which includes its head and belly and everything else. Inside the shell, beetles, spiders, and even some larger animals that birds can't crack the shell. So the snail is safe. The box turtle is a reptile related to lizards and snakes. The snail is part of the mollusk family, along with clams, oysters, and octopuses. Turtles and snails are not even distant cousins. The tall ears are for hearing and more. A rabbit's tall ears can rotate 270 degrees or three quarters of the way around. This allows the rabbit to hear foxes, dogs, and hawks approach from any direction. The ears are also cool the rabbit off in the summer and warm it up in the winter. During cold winter, blood vessels in the ears shrink so that less warm blood flows to the ears and escapes through the skin. This keeps the heat inside the rabbit. A bilby has tall ears for the same reasons, to hear predators which include pythons, dingoes, and feral cats. In the hot Australian desert, the bilby 
may also use its ears to shed heat. In hot weather, blood vessels in the ears swelled so that more warm blood travels through. There. For an animal with big ears, this allows plenty of warmth to escape through the skin. Rabbits, which live all over the world, are rodents. Bilbies live only in Australia. They are marsupials like kangaroos. In addition to big ears, rabbits and bilbies both have strong hind legs for hopping away from predators. Wings are for flying. A bird's wings are covered with stiff feathers. The feathers push down the air, and the air pushes back up. This allows the bird to fly. Flying makes birds better at catching prey, finding fruits and nuts, and escaping predators. Bat wings are made not for, of feathers, but cartilage. Your ears are also made of cartilage. It stretches from the bat's long fingers to its feet. Flying al allows bats to hurt, hunt insects in mid-flight and to feast on many different plants in one night. Birds and bats developed wings separately. Birds evolved from fast and ferocious dinosaurs called theropods, which included Tyrannosaurus and raptor raptors. Bats, which are mammals, like e likely evolved from a mammal that glided from tree to tree, just as lemurs and flying squirrels do today. Black and white is for cam camouflage. Penguins may, mere, may be appear to be wearing tuxedos, but their color pattern is actually camouflage. A shark or seal swimming over a penguin will file to see its black back, which blinds in, blends in with the dark ocean depths. It's hard for them to see a penguin from underneath, too. Its white belly gets masked by the sunlight streaming, streaming in from above. If sharks and seals can't see a penguin, they can't eat it. Orcas or killer whales are also black and white. But as a top predator in the ocean, orca doesn't use its camouflage for protection. Rather, the orca's black and white pattern allows it to sneak up on the animals it eats, such as seals, whales, and even penguins, if the orca can see them. Though they share the same ocean, a penguin is, is a bird and an orca is a mammal. They both develop black and white coloring as an adaptation to life in the ocean. So, um, so penguins and orcas are completely different animals, but they have a similar trait because they live in the same place. <clears throat> a light is for drawing attention. A firefly's glow is caused by a chemical inside its body. The flashlight, li flashing light is usually used to attract a mate, but fireflies don't always play fair. Some trick other species. In, in that case, a firefly will see a familiar flash and approach, only to get eaten by the trickster insect. In the darkness of the deep sea, the anglefish light and dangles from its dorsal fin. It glows because of the light light up bacteria living inside the fish. The light lures other fish to come near, then the anglefish eats them. A firefly is a beetle, a type of insect, an anglefish, of course, a fish. In both cases, the light say, look at me. What they don't say is, I'm going to eat you. So look at the photograph. What other traits help an anglefish eat other fish? Look at their teeth. A beak is for crushing. A parrot's beak is thick and sharp. For instance, a macaw weighs just 2 pounds, but the force of its bite is 167 pounds per inch. That's five times strong stronger than the bite of a deadly python. But the parrot doesn't eat other animals. It uses its beak to crush nuts and seeds. While an octopus beak is just like a parrot's, the octopus crushing crushes not nuts but crabs and mol mollusks with its beak, and it is only hard part of its body. An octopus is a self of pod that lives in all the world's oceans. A parrot is a bird that is native to Central and South America, Africa and India, South Asia and Australia, but they both have a beak to help them eat hard things. So look at the photographs of the duck. No, no, sorry. <clears throat> a bill is for slurping. A duck bill is round and flat. Along the edge there is a comb. <clears throat> the duck scoops up animals such as insects, snails, and fish from the pond. And it spits out mud and muck through the comb. A duck's bill is soft around the edges so that it can fill its food. The duck-billed platypus uses its bill in the same way as a duck. The two animals also share webbed feet but padding, for paddling through the water. A platypus mother even lays eggs like a mother duck. A duck is a bird and a platypus is a mammal, a montramium like the ingnacht. A platypus's fur and one once hatched platypuses drink milk from their mother. Fur and milk make a platypus a mammal and not a duck. So look at the photographs of the duck and the duck-billed platypus. They are different in lots of ways. They both, they both, they both, they may both have bills, but in many ways they are very different. A long sticky tongue is for catching insects. A giant anteater's tongue is two feet. 
long and super sticky after clawing open an ant hill and sticking its long snout inside it begins flicking its tongue so the ants stick to it in this way it can eat 35,000 ants and termites each day using its long sticky tongue for the same purpose to eat insects as the aardvark its favorite food is termites but it's been known to lick up its share of ants too Ant eaters and aardvarks are both mammals, but ant eaters live in South America and ab aardvarks in, in Africa. The, the closest relative of the ant eaters is the sloth, whereas the aardvark is close cousins with the elephant. A tusk is for lots of things. Walrus tusks are teeth that grow up to, their f to three feet. Male walruses fight using their tusks, but the tusks are helpful in other ways too. When a walrus is swimming in the Arctic Sea, it needs to take a breath. It can break through the ice for, with its tusks. A swimmer and walrus can also pull itself onto the ice with its tusks. Elephant tusks are teeth too, but can grow to 10 feet like, wal long. like walruses, many elephants fight with their tusks, but elephants also use their tusks to dig for food and tear bark from trees, which they, can, they eat, then eat. Walruses and elephants are both mammals, but they are not close kin. A walrus's nearest relatives are sea lions and, sea and seals. Surprisingly, an elephant's closest cousin is also a sea creature, the manatee. Tusks are helpful tools for both walruses and elephants. Twin traits. Helpful traits repeat themselves again and again in nature. In fact, when scientists discover a new species, they often name them after animals they, they resemble. For instance, the mole cricket got its name because its four legs look like a mole's, which is used to dig underground just like its namesake. There are also animals known as the giraffe weevil, an insect with a long neck like a giraffe's. A porcupine fish with spines like a porcupine that stick out with its, when it's threatened and, are, and a parrot fish, which has a beak-like mouth similar to a parrot's. All these animals developed twin traits because they needed them to survive similar situations. I'll be often in very different environments. There are still animals that have yet to be discovered, and because of convergent elevation, they'll likely have features we've seen elsewhere. It's fun to imagine what these animals might be. A duck-billed lizard, an elephant's fish with tusks, odds as they may seem, they will also look vaguely familiar. So think back on what we've read. Would you guess the porcupine, porcupine fish has spines for the same reason that a porcupine does? Why do you think that? And then... Um, this is the index. Again, this is going to show you some um, the words and where to find them.